All right, everyone, I really am delighted to share this project. This, uh, um, I'd, I'd like to sort of start with a disclosure, which is that I have uh, nothing to disclose, no conflict of interest with Wikipedia, except that I love it. Um, and I, and I, uh, I wanted to remind you that yesterday, uh, Nuno Souza offered us a quote, and he didn't tell us who the author was. He asked us to predict who it was. And many people pulled out their phones, and you did a search on some uh, provider. And odds are pretty good that the source of the information you found was from Wikipedia. It is um, easily, uh, consistently, one of the top five most heavily trafficked websites on the planet. Um, so I wanted to start with a, a quote of the co-founder of Wikipedia because it's a rather audacious uh, endeavor. And I think that's wonderful. I think it's wonderful that, there, that that is the vision. Um, and at a global health professions education conference like this one, uh, I think we would all agree that uh, maximum knowledge for all of uh, the world's population would be a fabulously uh, large data set. So, um, so let me uh, ask, you've all heard of Wikipedia. By way of show of hands, how many of you have heard of Wikiproject Medicine? Just raise your hands if you've heard of it. Fantastic, there's, because there's only a few people here who have learned about it. So at the very least, you'll learn one thing from me today. Um, Wiki Project Medicine is a group of all volunteers who are dedicated to improving the quality of health-related information on Wikipedia. It's roughly 250 people. Many of them are clinicians and healthcare providers. Uh, many of them are not. Uh, but this group of volunteers have gone through the English language Wikipedia page uh, and uh, rank ordered the roughly 26,000 health-related topics by uh, importance. And I want to show you the importance scale takes into account two very important attributes. One is the number of people reading it, uh, but the second one is the global burden of disease. So, for example, even though dengue fever is not prevalent in the United States, uh, uh, it is on the top importance. Uh, so, too, is human sexuality, because a lot of people read about sexuality on Wikipedia. So here's the important scale that the Wiki Project Medicine community has created. And I, I show it here for you just to see the examples of the, uh, the kind of uh, articles that are deemed top importance uh, and on down the scale. All of this is available freely on Wikipedia. So you can find all of this uh, when you do a search for Wiki Project Medicine. Um, did you all know that all Wikipedia articles are graded for quality? Is that something that is uh, commonly known? So um, I want to show you the grading scale. Again, this is all on Wikipedia. But uh, all Wikipedia articles start with a stub quality of an article with the first few sentences. And as people add more sentences, it becomes a start quality, C, B, and on up the scale there. Uh, the top rating is a featured article. And featured articles are featured on the Wikipedia page when they rotate which articles are featured, hence the term featured. Um, and you can see here some examples of some uh, health-related topics that uh, are at those different levels of uh, Wikipedia quality. Um, again, this is on Wikipedia, so if you clicked on those blue links, you would see the criteria to achieve that grade or that quality on Wikipedia. Um, when you mix those two things together, the importance scale from the Wiki Project Medicine and the quality scale, um, you have a, a beautiful image that's available on Wiki Project Medicine's page, which shows you effectively the most impactful work that we sh might want to do if we wanted to improve Wikipedia's quality in the healthcare space. So uh, as you can see, there's only about 100 top importance articles in the English language, um, and 18 of them are at C quality. So there's a lot of work uh, to do in improving the quality of those articles. So here's an example. Um, on uh, English language Wikipedia, schizophrenia is a, uh, a very densely referenced article. And if you look at the top there, you'll see there's an article tab. And right next to it is something called a talk page, where people who care about that topic are engaging with each other about the topic. If we click on that talk page, you will see a list of all the communities that are interested in that topic. And I will show you here that this article is considered a featured article quality. Um, and it's rated as top importance on the Wiki Project Medicine scale.
Here's another example. In this case, um, uh, the American Röntgen Ray Society. I'm showing you this one specifically because you can see the entirety of the article here on the, um, on the slide. Um, exactly four sentences, three of which have been referenced. And if you click on the talk page, you will see that this, in this case, the article is considered low importance, and it's a stub quality article. So if, if you learn nothing else from me today, whenever you go to Wikipedia, just click on that talk page to get a sense of what the degree of quality of that article is, and you'll get a sense for who cares about it and who wants to make it better. So uh, we at UCSF decided to get on board with this community. Um, and, and three years ago, we, I started an elective for fourth year med students to be partnering with these uh, efforts. It garnered a little bit of press attention um, because medical students and Wikipedia is a sexy topic uh, for the press. But as you said, our students are going to Wikipedia all the time. Uh, there are some studies that suggest 94% of medical students use Wikipedia. I'd be willing to bet it's much higher and much closer to 100% now. So. Um, Everything we've done at UCSF is on Wikipedia. When we designed the elective or the course, I realized that I had to put my uh, money where my mouth is by making it all publicly available for everyone to see, as opposed to behind a firewall or a course uh, management platform or a uh, platform. So if you search for UCSF Wiki Project Medicine, you'll see our Wikipedia page. Um, and uh, uh, I want to share with you that we have now offered the elective five times over the last three years, with a total of 50 fourth year or final year medical students completing the elective. And what I'd like to do today is share with you some data, some results about the uh, impact of the course. So because we were the first ones to design this, there really wasn't a model that we had in mind for how we would evaluate it. So we used some principles of emergent design and thinking about how would you measure this new concept. So we came up with three broad categories of outcomes that we wanted to measure. Um, and I'll label them for you as, what is the impact on the medical students who complete the course? Uh, for that domain, we chose to do qualitative research. Uh, we did mid-course uh, one-on-one interviews that we uh, were semi-structured, that we audio transcribed to look for themes. And at the end of the course, we did a focus group with all of the enrolled students to hear the variation in their opinions uh, bouncing off of each other. The second broad domain we chose to measure was the impact on Wikipedia readers themselves. And that one's very easy to measure because Wikipedia does that all for us. It just keeps track of how many people read the pages. So we thought we would look at those traffic statistics during only the months that our students were actively um, working on the articles. And the third domain we wanted to look at was the impact on the quality of the articles themselves. For that, we had a whole uh, variety of uh, lines of evidence that we chose to use because each one of them has limitations. So, um, so you can see the list of the uh, domains that we wanted to measure quality on. And I can answer more details about those at the, in the Q&A if you like. So uh, everything we did uh, was, I should declare that the last seven students just finished this elective in February, so I'm only sharing the outcome data of the first four cycles of the rotation. And I'd like to declare that we did apply for human subjects protection and we were deemed exempt from formal review. Okay, what did we find? Um, so in that first domain, uh, the, some of the themes that emerged when we asked students and we, uh, about their experience with the elective um, are best put in their own words. And so I'm using uh, the, the words of the students here. Um, a couple I would highlight to you. One of them is just this notion that um, it's hard to delete other people's work. I didn't expect that. Um, and it was uh, interesting because medical students are knowledgeable contributors um, and, and very well be that the work they're deleting is from someone who has less knowledge or experience or wisdom than they do, but they still found it very hard to delete off of Wikipedia. Um, uh, the sandbox thing, the red quote, is interesting because um, uh, normally medical students, certainly I imagine this is true in your institutions, like to buff and polish their work until it's just perfect before actually then giving it to the faculty member to grade. And that's so deeply ingrained in their training so far that, uh, that they had a very hard time editing live on Wikipedia. And, and the Wikipedia ethos is, 
edit live, make the changes right away, because you can always reverse the changes. And so it's far better to be doing things in real time. And so that was a, a cultural shift that we realized we needed to try to help our students grow past over the cycles of the elective. Um, and then frankly, they love Wikipedia. And so they love giving back to that source specifically. In terms of the second domain, um, uh, remember I'm sharing the results of the first uh, 43 students, but uh, for those 43 articles, during only the months that students were actively touching them, they were viewed over a million times. Uh, now, that's pretty impressive and staggering when you think about it, that that many eyeballs have been reading those pages. No, I'm not suggesting it's that many people. Certainly people go back to a page multiple times, but I don't know of any 43 physicians that can see that many patients in a month. In terms of the third broad domain, the impact on the article quality, uh, lots of lines of evidence. Um, what I would summarize for us today is that there was wide variation in these 43 students' uh, performance. Um, but acknowledging that wide variation, the, in total they made 1,500 edits to Wikipedia, they added 498,000 bytes of information. Um, one student added as many as 66 references to one article. One student took away as many as 64 references. Uh, and in total, they added 274 references to the articles they edited. Additionally, we saw mod modest but consistent gains in these other domains. Now, I want to talk a little bit about downstream consequences of the engagement. So the students all were doing this work for a full month of immersive experience for me. There was no other coursework they were taking. It was equivalent to a fourth year elective rotation. Um, uh, but we can also look at whether they were contributing to Wikipedia after they finished the course. So. Uh, in that regard, I can tell you that, to our knowledge, no more than one student has gone on to continue contributing to Wikipedia. Of course, they're interns and first-year uh, doctors and residents, and so I suspect they're kind of busy with patient care, which might be why they're not actively contributing again. In addition, um, if you look at the article quality, um, none of the 28 students that have the first three cycles of the elective, none of those article edits have been either reversed or vandalized in the time since they stopped contributing. And in some cases, that's now over two years ago. So a, certainly a long, longevity. I know everybody worries that someone else is going to go reverse and delete the contributions. In this case, we at least don't see any evidence to support that fear. The third one, the impact on Wikipedia readers. If we look at from the time our students stopped working on Wikipedia until last October, just as an artificial end date, uh, those 43 articles have now been viewed over 22 million times. Um, now, I'm not proving anything that we don't already know. People read Wikipedia. Um, but uh, what, I think, what I find staggering is just the volume of people reading health-related topics on Wikipedia. Okay. So um, now I want to share with you that uh, a lot of wonderful innovations have been happening since we started this elective. So it turns out that there is a, an entire spin-off foundation from Wikipedia called the Wiki Education Foundation. Their website is wikiedu.org. And this is a screen from their web page. Um, and uh, they have resources for faculty who want to teach with Wikipedia. They ask the audacious question, does editing Wikipedia change a student's life? And I, that sounds just as audacious as uh, Wikipedia's goals overall. Um, but I have to say, when I look at some of the quotes from students who have contributed to Wikipedia, um, I think it does change their lives. I think it does because they actually move from being digital native consumers of information to future digital contributors to the internet connected world we live in. So those are some quotes from some, some undergraduate students from different institutions. Um, thus far in the Wiki Education Foundation, there have been 14,000 students that have contributed to Wikipedia as a course assignment. And you can see that 92% of faculty members who use Wikipedia editing as a course assignment would do it again because they found it to be incredibly useful for their students. 
So, um, so we started partnering with the Wiki Education Foundation in our efforts at UCSF. And so I want to show you um, the infrastructure. So here is the course uh, that we have. You can see that we ran it in the fall of uh, this last year. And that this is the most recent block, the, the seven students that just finished the elective uh, in February. Um, and when you click on the course page, you'll see that they have the infrastructure for us as faculty members to design the course assignment as your local context dictates or as you wish to include it into your local curriculum. So in our case, a month-long immersion course, you can see that I had some volunteer guest uh, lecturers. Um, and uh, if you click on the um, timeline of the course, you can see that you can embed some video modules that Wikipedia has created to help your students understand the culture of editing Wikipedia, the concept of plagiarism, the ways that uh, they would want to think about contributing, how to evaluate the articles and sources. So and at the bottom, you see some of the topics that I specifically wanted our students to be working on because of the content of our course. It also allows you then to track student adherence. So I had seven students. You can see the first five listed there. And you can see that, that all, all five of them completed all eight of the required training modules uh, at that snapshot in time when I took that picture. Um, uh, up at the top here, you can see that Wiki Education Foundation makes it easy for you to assign articles to the students to work on um, and uh, to manage enrollment. In this particular case, I had the seven students choose one article to work on as a collaborative team, and they chose, as you saw, the hepatitis article. So that one article, during the month that they worked on it, uh, they made a total of 347 edits. They added nearly 22,000 words to the article, and that article during those 30 days was viewed 50,000 times. Uh, here is the fruits of their effort. Here's the Wikipedia hepatitis page. And if you click on that talk page, you will see that this article has now uh, been rated a B quality. So they were able to successfully move it all the way up to the B quality level. And it is one of the top importance articles that I showed you at the beginning. If you look further on that talk page, you will see my students are actively engaging with the Wikipedia community about the work they're doing. So these are my students' comments about the work they're doing. They chose each of them to work on different sections of the article um, uh, and declared that they were UCSF medical students. Um, and at the bottom here, I'll show you that there is a, uh, a Wikipedian who is engaging with my students about something they're messing up with and it had to do with the formatting of the references. So, so um, potential partners for us as faculty members uh, who we have not historically thought of as partners. OK. So let me just declare, like any good researcher, or scientist, or education researcher, that there are limitations to our work. Uh, so this is only 43 students so far. Uh, these are early adapters, so it very well may be that they have more typical enthusiasm for being digital contributors. I doubt that, but that's just a, a, a surmise on my part. Um, and this is a one institution study, so certainly it may not be generalizable to other medical schools. At the same time, we are uh, in press uh, for a manuscript uh, representing more detailed uh, description of all of our work. Uh, and I would like to more systematically analyze the results of those last group of seven students. I actually think that collaboration made them edit more and do more, but I'd like to uh, interview them and get a better sense for that, uh, that hypothesis on my part. Um, and uh, we are now beginning a collaboration with the UCSF pharmacy students, where a colleague of mine has begun having her students contribute to uh, medicine-related articles uh, as part of the pharmacy school curriculum. Um, and I would love, 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 love to partner with other medical schools uh, to see other schools emulate or what I would describe as copycat improvements to our work uh, in the local context that each of you are in. So I would be uh, remiss if I didn't tell you a couple of additional partnerships. So has anybody heard of Translators Without Borders? Um, there they are in Wikipedia. Translators Without Borders takes these articles once they reach B quality threshold and then translate them to other language Wikipedias. It is the most multilingual part of the internet. Um, and so far, they've translated over 1,300 languages, uh, 1,300 articles in 90 languages. Uh, and if you go to the Wiki Project uh, uh, Translation Task Force, you can see their efforts. Their Google pages. Here are some of the languages that they've done the translating in, in the European languages. Here they are in Asia and Middle East. 
and here a domain where there's a lot more work to do in Southeast Asia. So uh, lastly, if you haven't heard about Wikipedia Zero, it is an initiative to provide Wikipedia access in developing countries at no data charges, so zero cost. It is a free information resource. Why not make it free for the world? So from Wikipedia's Wikipedia Zero page, uh, there are now 600 million people that have access to Wikipedia for free across 64 countries and 82 mobile carrier providers. So putting that all together, I would offer that what we are doing, and I invite you to do, is have your students produce high-quality health information to the world's population in the language of their preference, in the way they already access the internet, and for free. Let me close by acknowledging my uh, co-authors and uh, co-colleagues whom, without whom I wouldn't have been able to do any of this work. And as I take your questions, I will acknowledge these are my students. These are the articles they edited, and I look for because uh, I because they have done the true work here, and I want to give them full credit. I look forward to your questions. Thank you very much.